Hey everybody, I'm back with another video. This time I'm gonna be talking about Ignite version nine. If you're not familiar with Ignite, I did another video on my channel. I'll link to it in the description. You can go check it out. I even spin up a new Ignite app so you can see exactly what it looks like. If you're too lazy to click that link and go through it, Ignite is a CLI. It's a command line interface, a little tool that lets you spin up a brand new React Native app. And when you build this new React Native app, you're gonna have all kinds of cool stuff already built in to it. It's been around for a long time. It's been around for seven years, something like that. We've been building on it continuously at Infinite Red. It represents the best practices that we've learned through eight years, eight plus years, of React Native consulting at the company. So when you use Ignite, you are not just getting a boilerplate, you're getting all of the best practices built into it. Now, we just put out version nine. We codenamed it Espresso. That sounds weird. It, isn't it supposed to be Espresso? No, this is Espresso. That's because it's full of Expo goodness. We have aligned more and more with Expo in the latest version of Ignite. I think you're gonna really love it. We put out a blog post about this, so you can go check it out at shift.infinite.red. It's titled Announcing Ignite 9.0 Expresso. There's this cool graphic that my business partner, Gant Laborde, created for us, some AI, some Photoshop. He, he did a great job with this. There's been a lot of work put into this. 68 commits, 219 files changed, a net negative 3,000 lines of code, less code, and over 100 developer hours in Ignite. 8.0, which was codenamed Maverick. We made Ignite Expo friendly, but this one is really now Expo focused. We did talk about this on React Native Radio, so you can check that out if you want more detail. This is just a quick overview. This goes through how to generate a new Ignite project, NPX, Ignite CLI, new pizza app. It has a new walkthrough, explains all of your options really well, and then it generates your project. Now what's new in Ignite 9 that really wasn't there in Ignite 8? First off, full Expo integration. We're gonna talk about all of these things, but I'm gonna read through the list. React Native 0.72, 73 is coming soon, and so you should see that in a future release. Flashlist is integrated. This is a brand new thing. Even though Flashlist has been around for a while, we had never integrated it into Ignite itself because we didn't know if we could totally recommend it in all cases. That's one of the key components of Ignite. If we put it into Ignite, we know that we've done it successfully on a client project and that's really important for us. There's a new list view component which allows us to switch back and forth between Flashlist and Flatlist on a smart basis. There's a, a reason for that, I'll talk about it in a bit. TypeScript strict mode. Those of you who have followed me on social media know that I'm not a TypeScript maximalist. I love TypeScript, I think it's awesome, but I'm not one of those people who thinks that if you don't use it in strict mode that you're committing some sort of illegal activity or something like that. We do see the value in TypeScript strict mode and so we turned it on by default. If you don't like that, you can always turn it off, no problem. We do have experimental new architecture support. Now I don't recommend new architecture yet. I'm hoping sometime next year that we'll get to the point where we can recommend it, but Right now, I recommend that you stay with a legacy architecture. Hopefully, I'll be able to do a video about this, talking about the new architecture. The code base has been streamlined down. There's a lot of things that have been just cleaned up in general. We put a lot of time into that. Continuing with the Expo theme, EAS, Expo Application Services. And now we have EAS build compatibility out of the box. There's an EAS.json configuration file. We also integrate Expo Splash Screen. In the past, we used to use React Native Boot Splash, but now we're using Expo Splash Screen, which works in all cases. Reactatron version three support. As of the recording of this video, we're about to launch Reactatron v3. There's also Bun support, specifically Bun as a package manager instead of Yarn. And I do recommend this. Use Bun unless you can't. Yarn is okay. NPM's okay. PNPM's okay. I really like the speed of Bun. However, Bun does have a few things where you'll run up against the walls and then you can always fall back to Yarn. And just some overall developer experience improvements. We're going to talk about all that stuff. So first off, full Expo integration. I've always talked about Expo being the future of React Native. In a lot of ways, we actually recommend it to our clients for greenfield projects. And I stand by that. It's a fantastic way to build React Native projects. In Ignite 8, we had Expo unification. I think the idea behind it was really good, where we would attempt to serve Expo Go and Expo 
expo pre-build and non-expo in the same boilerplate without making any changes. But it ended up being kind of confusing and especially developers newer to React Native or Expo were always confused. Like, is this an Expo app or is this a React Native app? The reality is it's both. You could build it for either. We decided to make it more explicit in Ignite 9. It doesn't come with an iOS and Android folder unless you decide to generate them. You can either do one of three workflows. You can do the Expo Go workflow, which will not have an iOS and Android folder at all. You can do the Expo pre-build workflow, which is continuous native generation, CNG. That allows you to generate those folders on command. There's also the DIY, the do-it-yourself workflow, which will generate them once. It still has Expo stuff under the hood, but it kind of acts more like a vanilla React Native project. You can't generate an Ignite app without some expo in it. There's going to be some expo there. If you want something without expo, you're going to have to strip it all out. We don't recommend that because even if you're not using EAS or any of the other expo things, expo has amazing third-party libraries, some of the best that you can find. And so we feel like it's kind of hamstringing yourself to not take advantage of all of those libraries. As I mentioned before, Ignite 9 also brings in React Native 0.72, and it is actually 0.73 ready. There are a lot of developer experience upgrades. When 73 comes in, and we're going to bring that in. We also bumped Expo to SDK 49. So you get the latest goodness. Flashlist is one of the coolest third-party libraries in React Native. It allows you to use view recycling to get way better performance on long lists. I mean, you, you see them in all kinds of React Native apps. We didn't put it in before. It wasn't supported on Expo Go. There were a few issues with it, but we're confident enough in it now that we can bring it in and use it by default. We did bring in a new list view component as well. This allows you to switch back and forth between flash list and flat list smartly. And that gets around a right to left language issue that we found. Hopefully we can remove this in future versions of Ignite. This is the thing that Ignite brings to the table. It smooths out these developer experience issues that you would have run into yourself. And instead you get to benefit from our pain. You're welcome. TypeScript strict mode. We were kind of reluctant to turn that on because so many of the developers using Ignite were actually transitioning into TypeScript. Remember, this has been around since 2016. The first versions of Ignite weren't even written in TypeScript. Having strict mode on was more of a painful experience. TypeScript has gotten a lot better. We now feel that fully supporting strict TypeScript is, is a great thing for the Ignite boilerplate. So we've turned that on. I don't recommend the new architecture yet. Keep an eye on my Twitter at Jamin Holmgren. I will let people know when I start recommending it. Right now, I don't think that it's a good option. We want to make it as easy as possible to enable the new architecture. So you can turn that on as part of the new Ignite workflow. Would you like to enable it? And you can say yes or no. We mentioned that we removed the iOS and Android folders, which obviously makes the code base much smaller. We also removed some extraneous dependencies that we don't need to have, removed some deprecated features, just made it a lot simpler. Expo Splash Screen. We used to use React Native's Boot Splash. Now we're doing Expo Splash Screen. Works great. As mentioned before, we now include an EAS build configuration file. These are the settings that we recommend for EAS build. We are also releasing Reactatron 3 very soon. So check that out. This is a screenshot. You can see what it looks like. We use Reactatron all the time. It's very, very handy. It's a super cool thing. I'm going to be doing a YouTube video where I actually show how to use Reactatron pretty soon because we're releasing Reactatron 3 and I want to show off its new features. Bun is now supported along with NPM and Yarn. We do use Bun in CI, which is nice because it, it's much faster. We updated the scripts in package.json, have better tests in general. We're using app.tsx instead of app.js. The new with splash screen expo plugin is there and the types are better too because of the switch to strict TypeScript by default. So that's Ignite 9 Expresso. What's next for Ignite? First off, go check it out. Go to infinite.red slash ignite and you'll be taken to the GitHub repo and you can check it out. You can try it yourself. But what's next? Like, what are we going to do after this? We already have a couple of things planned for future versions of Ignite. One big one is enhanced mono repo support. We've been working with a lot more clients who do bigger projects and, you know, mono repos. We want to make sure that Ignite supports them really well out of the box. So we're going to be working on that. It already works pretty well, but we want to make it so that it's really cool. One thing that's been out for a little while is the Ignite cookbook. Go to ignitecookbook.com and there's a lot of React Native specific things. They're all centered around Ignite, but since Ignite is really just a React Native app, it applies to 
other React Native apps as well. We're just using the Ignite patterns within it. Go check out ignitecookbook.com. Lastly, and this one was probably a little more controversial, we are considering removing Mobic State Tree as the primary state management library within Ignite. Now, I love Mobic State Tree. I'm one of the maintainers. I work on it with Tyler Williams, who's fantastic. I'll be doing videos about Mobic State Tree. I still think that Mobic State Tree is the way to go. Don't get me wrong. I really think that Mobic State Tree is still the best way to build an Ignite app. However, we've heard from the community and a lot of the community wants to use other things like Zustand and Vaultio and Legend State. And some people even want to use Redux and RTK. That's fine. We do it ourselves actually with some projects. We're probably going to strip out the state management solution and make it more state management agnostic. Use use state, use reducer, context, and give really good recipes in the Ignite cookbook, which allow you to add Mobex State Tree, RTK, Apollo, all these other state management solutions that people want to use. Keep an eye out for that. That's not in Ignite 9. Right now, it's still using Mobex State Tree. I still recommend it. You should still use it. But if you don't want to use that, you can let us know. It'll probably push us that direction. We want to become a little bit less opinionated on that. Lastly, I want to hear from you. So please do go to community.infinite.red and join the discussion in our community Slack. It's a free Slack. You can jump in, chat with us. Really appreciate you all coming along. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. See you all next time.